Hello everyone, Crydax here. Welcome back to our Pyatt Lines playthrough. In this episode, we're going to be working on Nexalit, which is a required building material for a few different buildings we're going to need. So if we look at the basic chain, we get raw Nexalit from tailings. And there's really no other way to get it at the moment. I don't think this is red science. Yeah, that's green science. Um, so we will be doing this in an evaporator which it looks like we can already craft. So let's take a look at our Helmod chain here. Or wait, we want Nexalit. And then Nexalit plate. Made from clean Nexalit. So to get one plate per second, which will almost certainly be enough, you'd well, unless alien life has changed some things, you don't need a ton of it at this stage of the game. And then raw Nexalit, we are making from tailings. So we need three evaporators, three washers, two foundries. So three evaporators, three washers, two foundries. And we'll need a factory building, which we'll craft as well. I'll give it some space here. We'll want to line it up with the tailings building. Okay. We also need some more of these pipes. Input. Wait for the building to craft. Okay, so then we'll also need to deal with the tailings dust. So this tailings dust can be turned into coal dust and copper and iron, or it can be turned into coal dust and rich dust. I think those are my options. Hmm. Considering the volume of it, I probably just want to get rid of it. Rich dust can be made into iron oxide and homite sand. I mean, that's not very useful. So we'll just have a single solid separator. Separator. And we'll use that. Speaking of solid separators, I put one over here to help deal with all the extra ash, and it turns ash into some coal dust and a tiny bit of iron oxide, I think. So that way we can fit a lot more in a chest because it uses like a hundred ash to make just a few. Okay, so tailings will come in. We'll have our three evaporators in a row. And I've run out of pipes. So let me grab some more pipes. From all the way over here, we'll give you some more iron. And we'll grab some more iron on our way back. Now that we've got a much more efficient iron line going, we should have plenty. Okay. So then we are also going to want to use a top-up valve here into our little tailings because we end up with some extra. Okay, they can handle 1.4 per second, so that's two belts worth, or two inserters worth of things. We'll put the tailings dust on the right side, which we said we're going to use a solid separator for. Hmm. That over here, I guess. And then that will use tailings dust. And then this is a little complicated, but it'll work. We'll put this on a belt and then the coal dust, whoa, I don't know what I just did. Coal dust 
We'll go to the left to power a burner. Let's see, actually we want to do this differently. We actually want to do it this way. Let's see. So what we want to do is we want the coal dust to go to the burner first. Which will burn the... What's it called? Whatever this stuff is. Chromite? Rich dust. So that should do it. And then the extra coal dust will go out here to a boiler, which will just essentially waste some water and vent the steam. Not the most elegant thing I've ever done, but it will get rid of everything that we don't want. And then we'll bring this back up. Man, that's so ugly. Don't judge me. Okay, and then we've got three washers, which just barely fit, to wash our Nexalit. And we've got some output tailings that will go back into this system first. And then the water, we'll need a pump jack for. And then we get Nexalit coming out. So let's see, we'll have, what's the speed on this? One in, 0.3 out. Okay, so we're only using one side of the belt. So we'll go in, 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 and then out, out, out. Okay, and then what side? It'll be on this side, which is the far side. But we'll switch that side of the belt that the raw nexalit's on. So then we can take the clean nexalit, we'll come out here. We need two foundries, so maybe I should go out on the other side. We'll just do something like this the staggered inserters for nexalit. And clean nexalit, and that will go. We'll just have it come out the bottom. No, I'm just kidding. There's no room. Yeah, there's room. Okay. Have it come out the bottom. It will be right here. We got power this building up. Okay. So the evaporators are running. Oh, we need to pick the water recipe in our pump jack. And there we go, we're cleaning the Nexalit. Should should all be working. This is for tailings dust, which is powering the burner. Oh yeah, and we have to do this so it'll put the ash back in, because ash needs to be burned as well. And then extra coal dust will just be vented as steam. Do gas fins not work with steam? I thought they did. Are you serious? That would be a really big bummer. I do know that gas vents work with lots of other things, but maybe not steam. You'd think they would. Well, tailings ponds work with... Do I have any? Tailings ponds work with steam. So, 
we can just do that. It's pretty hideous. But it's the only way I have right now to get rid of coal dust, I think. Later on there are some recipes you get that can deal with it, but now that's all we got. And there we go, we've got some Nexalit. So eventually we'll bus it and stack it and things, but right now I don't think I need very much. So I just want to have enough to craft the buildings that I need. Speaking of buildings, we were looking at starting Moondrop. But that's going to require cDNA, which requires all these things. Okay, that's right. So laboratory instruments are going to need rubber. So that's one thing we need to work towards. We have Doralumin in 10, so we can make equipment chassis. Optical sets require glass and air and boron trioxide, which is just borax and hydrogen. So we can also set that up. Rubber is the more complicated one that we get a really nice recipe once we're in green science, but our red science recipe is horrible. So I think rubber is the big thing we want to work on next. So I think I'll settle for one per second. That might even be more than I need. Let's take a look at our circuits. Circuits are going to need... Let's see. Or do I not even need rubber for circuits? I think it's just for green science. But green science is going to want half a rubber per second to make a third of a green science, which I think is plenty, um, given that I get a much more efficient recipe after not too long. Problem is we need latex again, and we already know what that chain looks like with all the limestone and sap and formic acid and all that stuff. We did that for red science. And then we need polybutadine, which is titanium and aromatics. So we'll need some more titanium on the bus for sure. And aromatics is just are really and later on it's awesome we can get aromatics and benzene just from tailings and we'll get tons of tailings from the higher tier or like iron plates and copper plates and stuff we get a lot more tailings so we'll have more tailings than we know what to do with sooner or later but yeah so we've got some tar and then some titanium and water and that all can produce some steam at 60 degrees, which we can cool back into water if we want to. Let's see. Where's the cooling recipe, though, is the question. This one. Okay. So we might as well do that. And I think that's it. So let's take a look at our titanium as well. Titanium. And see, we did research better titanium, so I'm wondering if it's worth upgrading. Titanium plate. Right now we're doing that one, and I think the one we've unlocked is the grade 3 titanium. So, 10. I don't know why I'm doing 10. I mean, I like 10 because it's easier to understand the ratio. But 15 is obviously a full belt, which makes more sense in some instances. But if we look at this grade 3 stuff, we need grade 1, which makes rejects. And grade 1 is made from grade 2 along with the ore. So we should do ingredient input and ore. And then the rejects can also be made into grade three. So all of that said and done, we get about double the titanium along with some stone and gravel. For a bit more power usage. 
So it's about the same amount of power per plate, because that's 1.9. So if you divide, the way that you do this is you divide the 3.8 megawatts by the 1.92 plates, and it's about two megajoules per plate. And this one is about two megajoules per plate, because it's 2.1 megawatts for one plate per second. So all that being said and done, you see that it ends up being about the same power. But is this worth it right now is the question. Do I need enough titanium that I want to double my output? And I think the answer is no. I only need a quarter of a titanium per second for my rubber. And... Ooh, wow. I will actually need a lot of titanium per second for this. Oh, it's these uh, bio samples. So I will want to double my titanium before I finish green science, but I think for now I'm fine with the way it is. So let's go ahead and put our titanium on the bus because we'll definitely need it, which means we need some more belts. You know what? I'm just going to grab a bunch more iron and copper to dump into here. And now that I'm thinking about it, we probably should just move all of our basic mall items into this area. Okay, that should do it for a little while. I should just copy paste this and move it over, but I'm too lazy. Okay, so we'll get some more wires. Get some more plates for belts. Think that should be plenty there. We'll do a bit more for pipes. And then we'll take all the belts. And we'll take a bunch of cables. And then I can craft some undergrounds. Some splitters. And some more inserters. Okay, that should do it. Awesome. And we want more titanium. He's going to do half per second, so. I definitely don't have the acetylene to handle this, but we can work on that later. This way we at least have a bit more capacity. Connect this up to the side so I have a bit more space. And then we'll just copy this a couple times. Because I know I'm going to upgrade to the tier 2 titanium, I don't think it's worth making this more complicated. I do need a little bit of fuel for it though. Grab some raw coal. That should be a little better. Now my acetylene is going to run out, but that's fine. Okay. So then we will put this... Oh, I also... I didn't mention this, but I bust the wood all the way down here so we don't have to supply wood to this anymore. And I also fixed that we have two microorganism mines... So that's a little better. I also use, I'm using the, what is this called? The moss for compost, which powers the carbon dioxide because we were starting to run out. And now I realize I've created the same issue with Coke. Because this was stalling out because I didn't have enough Coke. I had too much syngas. But now the problem is I have too much coke. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to burn the coke into coal gas and tar. Which I wouldn't normally do, but given that this is exclusively Oh shoot. This needs to be connected up as well.
Um, given that this whole setup is exclusively to make sin gas, I think it's okay to use up this this coke in this way. Okay, so we want tar to line up here. And then coal gas. I'm just going to put it in the same area that that's in. Make sure this has power. And then the ash. We will just belt around. Ugliest thing I can imagine. I'll we'll just put it on that belt. So now we can handle kind of everything that comes from rock hole. Which should help because it looks like I had run out of sin gas to power all my glass works, which is why we maybe ran out of glass. No, we actually just still don't have enough rubber stoppers, which I think that's just a crafting speed issue because all of these things are backed up. It's probably this guy. 0.1 per second. Yeah, I don't know. That's fine. Red science is running, so I'm not going to mess with it at this point. Back to our titanium. So, trying to figure out if I can bust titanium maybe along with the glass and then split it over here. So we'll do that. The glass starts here. So I'll put titanium on top and then run ahead of it. I'm still at game speed too. I don't want to be too much of a cheater, you know. All right, and then this is where we'll have the titanium split off. Left, titanium plate. And then, let's see. Planning on putting lead there. We've already got, so yeah. We've already used eight types of plates. So we will put our titanium into a stacker. Okay, so we put this in a stacker. We're going to want, let's just say the bottom layer. Oops. The, the new functionality of belts is nice, but sometimes it throws you for a loop. And we'll put our stack titanium on this line right here. Okay. Awesome. We will need to upgrade our acetylene production sooner or later. We've just got this poor guy. And I don't think I can get the better way to make it until green science. Or no, we never get a better way to make it until a lot later. Tholin stage two, which is a million hours into the game, or this, which is maybe half a million hours into the game. Um, so yeah, we are stuck making acetylene exactly this way. I guess what helps is coke becomes cheaper. And lime potentially becomes cheaper. Well, we won't have that forever either. So, oh well. But we do get a much better way to make coke with green science, which helps a lot with the cost of the overall cost of acetylene. Because, yeah, I think, I mean, the cost of acetylene is mostly coke, because seven coke and two lime to make ten. And then the lime needs three more coke. So that's ten coke to make ten calcium carbide, along with two... Two lime is two limestone. So yeah, two limestone and ten coke. 
So it's mostly just coke that we're using up here. But anyway, I'm not going to worry about that right now. We might as well put lead on the bus as well while we're here. Although, do I get a better version of lead? I don't know if I get better lead until green science. Oh, I do. Okay, I have grade one. And what's that do for me? Lead ore. Lead plate, lead plate from lead ore right there. Oops, input 10. Okay, so currently I get one per six, and then if I switch this, I get five per 10. Okay, that's a lot better. Okay, so I think we're gonna want to do that. Um, we'll add that to the list. Better lead. I'll edit this to better titanium. That needs to be somewhere on the list. But we're working on rubber right now. So we're not going to worry about that. And I think I'll make rubber up here. Three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we also need tar, and then latex, and latex is its own little mess. So we're going to make a little chain for that. So we need the slabs, which need, is it moss and seaweed that we end up needing for this, or just the seaweed? Creamy latex is just renewable resources that come from water. So we are going to need sap extractors with a bunch of sap trees in them. Sap tree. Is that right? We need 18 sap extractors? That doesn't sound right. How fast are these extracting? Oh wow, they are going pretty slow. Ooh, okay, I'm gonna reduce this because I don't wanna deal with all of this latex. But let's finish the chain first. Okay, so we want seaweed. Is it worth, let's see, water, carbon dioxide. So two seaweed from 100 carbon dioxide. Or eight seaweed from two limestone. Huh. I wonder if seaweed makes very much biomass. Okay, so one seaweed makes two biomass. Each biomass makes 30, I believe, if I can find it. Carbon dioxide. There it is. Yeah, 30. Okay, so then each seaweed makes 60 carbon dioxide. So spending 120 Carbon, or 100 carbon dioxide to get two extra seaweed is almost pointless because you only get 120 carbon dioxide back from the extra two. And all the extra stuff you have to do is probably just not worth it. But then the other question is, is it worth getting eight by adding in some limestone? I'm going to go with probably yes. It's also a slightly faster crafting speed. Seaweed crop facility, let's add in some seaweed, that's moss. Seaweed modules, okay, 
And then we need the formic acid, which we will make from all these things. Definitely make this from biomass, wherever that recipe is, right here. And then, what's the easiest way to get 1.67 biomass? That's the real question. There are just so many different biomass recipes, I'm truly flabbergasted. I have no idea which one's the fastest. If I should do logs or just use the seaweed that I'm already making. So that would need another 0.84 seaweed, which is another third. That's maybe a bad idea. If I use logs, which is kind of what I'm doing for my power generation. What kind of forestry is that going to require? You can see how Pyanodons just gets real out of hand real fast. Uh, that's only a third of a forestry. That seems better. Hmm. I probably should just bust biomass, to be honest. I'm gonna need it for lots of things. So, we'll just assume that's on the bus. Okay, and then steam we can get off the bus. and stone. Did I not put... I guess I haven't put stone on the bus. We probably should do that. And then we also need carbon black, which we can make from crude oil, hot air, and vacuum. Vacuum you make on site from pressure pumps. Hot air and crude oil we have on the bus. So I think that does it. And we're going to reduce the final output to maybe 0.25. We'll do half of this. And that should at least get us to the point where we can make the more efficient recipe. So we will need some biomass on the bus as well as stone. So stone should probably go on this bottom of this one. And we've got a lot of extra stone right here, which we can stack. And put onto this belt, right? Yeah third one up. Okay, so that'll be stone. We always need more loaders, of course, and then we'll have the stone come up maybe here. So that should do it. Now we've kind of got two sheds worth of storage. This will stack up and we should make it so we only have one side of that belt full. And then we'll have stone and then biomass. So I'm imagining, how full is this guy? Oh, we got plenty of space. So I'm imagining we're going to have to expand this setup and probably put it inside of some factory buildings sooner or later. Looks like we're actually using 
more than the amount of wood that we have. I guess half of it's filling up the chest, so once that stops, hopefully it'll back up. And then this guy is making biomass. So we will output priority right, and then ship our biomass down south. We'll have the belt go parallel with these guys, just to take up less overall base space, as I call it. I've never really called it that before, but here we go. Okay. down go next to the shed go next to the rock hole we're gonna grab some more belts it's amazing how many you can use okay well we're definitely not finishing rubber in this episode but we can get a decent amount of the way there So we'll go just behind all the tin, down through, and we'll have the biomass go on the same belt as our stone here. And I'm a bit worried that that may mess up our forestry area, but... I did set the output priority correctly, I think. Let me double check on that. Yeah, I, I did, yeah, output priority right. So it might mess this up for a little bit because it'll use maybe all of my logs. 0 0.33, 0 0.33, 0 0.33. So the input rate and output rate's about the same. Oh, I just realized that's 0.82 on the ash. I don't know if I noticed that before. One insert is not enough. Or at least, technically, maybe it's barely enough. I don't know. But. Yeah, we're starting to use up our log supply. But that's okay. We'll, we'll be okay. This will back up sooner or later. Okay, so we've got biomass and stone, which crude oil, tar, titanium, air, steam, stone, iron plate, copper plate, biomass. So we have everything we need for rubber. And now we just need to look at all the buildings we need for this, which is crazy. Pin. Where's the pin? Oh, you can't pin a whole block. Interesting. So we'll have to pin one thing at a time. We'll start with the latex, because that's the absurd stuff. And I honestly should probably blueprint this. So, make it look nice next time I, I do this. Um, okay, so we need... That's the wrong button. Three pulp mills. Three destructive distillation columns, we got that. Furnace. Four of those. Washer. Two of those. Sap extractor, we need a bunch, which we need soil for that. And I think I still have my soil extractor from oh so long ago. So sap tree extractor. We're out of stone bricks. We'll grab some of those. One, two, three. Okay. We need all ten of them. Then we need six seaweed crop facilities. Look at that. That's exactly the amount of limestone I needed. Or had. And then soil extractor is five. Wow. It's a lot of things to craft.
And then we'll need 20 sap trees and 60 seaweed. I do think we need to set up some sap seed stuff again. How does this work? No, it wasn't. Let's see if I can. Was it the botanical nurseries? I think it was this one. Yeah. So we need sap to make sap seeds and then the sap seeds. What do we make the sap trees in? We also make that in a nursery. So I'll put another one here. And we'll need to get this going. I want to say I still have some extras in here. I do. Awesome. Okay, so we can get this all jump started. So you need the sap trees to make sap to put into the thing that makes seeds to put into the thing that makes trees. Okay, so that should help. Although we almost have enough already. We only need 10 of the sap trees, or we need 20, I guess. Okay, so we'll get that all put together once we start going, and then what else do we need? We need these buildings and summary. We need one cooling tower. We need some tar processing units. And we need a cracker. We need to grab some more pipes because we've run out of those. So um, if you want to just stop the episode here, I'm just going to craft a few more buildings. And in the next episode, we'll actually put together our rubber factory. But I'll just finish this out real quick. And then we'll call it a day. So we've got the destructive distillation column. We need a reformer. And then we need three pressure pumps, which we already have. So that should do it. I'm going to add in a couple pump jacks. We've run out of iron because I'll probably need water somewhere. OK. And then I'll go make a bunch more inserters. We've run out of small parts. Okay. Yep. Oops. Don't need stone. All right. How many engines do I have? I good? I'm good on engines. We almost used up all of our copper cable. Look at that. Okay. We seem to be good on most of these things. We'll need a bunch of pipes, though. Probably some more undergrounds. Okay. Don't really have a ton of spare inventory space, but I'll need some more factory buildings as well. So we'll grab some stone. If I can remember where it is. I did not mean to make a lamp. Although we will need to automate lamps at some point. But yeah, there we go. Okay, so we will work on making rubber in the next episode out of all of those ingredients. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you next time.